and welcome to Rise Up with Jenny and Katie. We have an amazing show. We are with Pastor Derek Snodgrass, who wrote a book about the supernatural power of tears. Did you know that your tears are liquid intercession to the King of Kings? He speaks to you, and we're going to hear all about that. So welcome, yes. Pastor Derek. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here, Katie and Jenny. Um, it's an honor. It's an honor for us to have you. Wow. Yeah. Pastor Derek is a pastor, he's a leader, he's a trailblazer at Spiritual Prosperity Enrichment Center in Indiana, in the USA. Mm -hmm. And he has had many supernatural encounters with God. Today you will hear many, be blessed, and expect that for your own life today. Yes. I'm, I'm excited to talk about this because he ha you have this your new book out and you say that you're not a writer. Yeah, you know, God just kind of sometimes thrusts us into yeah. these areas that you're yeah. not really familiar with. He kind of shows you the end of a thing from the beginning. So I don't really term myself as a writer, but God has been using me in that way. That's sure. right. Yeah. And so you had an encounter that, that brought you to this, like a destiny decision to write a book, to tell a story. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. So what ended up happening with me was I got on um, this spiritual journey or this quest. I was just looking for more of God. Um, I never had any intentions to write, you know, I, yes. I wasn't like, you know, God bless me with a book. I would love to write one day. That was never in my heart. And what ended up happening was after I went in a season of pursuing the Lord, season of extended fasting, a season of prayer, you know, I was just like, God, there's got to be more than yes. where I'm at right now. And you know, sometimes mm -hmm. I've been saved since I was nine years old. I'm 34 years old now and um, lived, you know, the best I could to, you know, serve the Lord, please him, filled with the Holy Spirit at 16, you know, speaking in tongues, born yes. and raised Pentecostal, you know, but as time progressed, ultimately I accepted my call to the ministry. I became a pastor at 28 years old or so. Mm -hmm. And um, I did that for a few years, but then it was like, I was feeling like I was spiritually dry. I felt like I was just going through the motions yeah. of preaching every Sunday, you know, trying to come up with the best sermon with the, the yeah. twists and all of that type of that stuff. Yeah, you know, and, and, yeah. Yeah, ultimately, you know, the people were like, oh, we're getting blessed by this, but I wasn't getting blessed by it. Mm, and yeah. sometimes I think as a pastor, you can fall into a trap of, you know, studying to perform almost yeah. instead on. of actually studying out of personal devotion and ministering to the Lord. Wow. So you can get lost in that. And so after about two or three years, I would say I became very dry. My relationship with the Lord was very stale mm -hmm. and I almost hit a breaking point. And that's mm -hmm. really what the book is about. When you hit that place of desperation, um, Jennifer was talking about it earlier today. Yeah. When you hit that place of desperation where you're just like, enough is enough, yeah. like yeah. I'm tired. Then I was like, God, you're gonna have to do something. And I didn't know what he was gonna do, how it was gonna look. I was completely open, mm -hmm. God, however you wanna do it, I'm yeah. willing and I'm here. Yeah. So after I started fasting and I would pray and, and do all of these things, I ultimately would have a strong encounter with the Holy Spirit and that really changed everything. Wow, yeah. can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So so the encounter with the Holy Spirit was just one day I was um, reading the Word of God. I had my Bible out in front of me and um, as I was reading, I pray oftentimes still to this day before I read, like Holy Spirit, just lead me in. If you have anything on your heart, you know, just yeah, show me what sure. you want me to read so I'm not just kind of flipping through aimlessly. And so as I started to read my Bible, it became alive. And I know that sounds like a cliche. When I say alive, I mean every scripture that I went to and thumbed through, I knew it was God led, spirit inspired. I knew it was literally like the unction of the Holy Spirit that was taking me to each page, wow. each scripture. It went from black and white to full color HD. I mean, the, <laughs> I it like was that. like they literally just yeah. the words jumped out yeah. and they were so rhema, they were so tangible, they were so relevant, they were so real yeah. that it went straight to my heart. And all of these scriptures really dealt with intimacy with the Lord. They really dealt with, you know, how God is a present, right now, tangible God. He's not yes. some ambiguous figure in yes. the cloud a million miles away that doesn't really hear us, but he's present with us right yeah. now. It's just like Emmanuel, God with us. Yeah. You know, with us is God is how mm -hmm. it reads in the Greek. With us right now is God. Yeah. And so I started to read these scriptures 
And, you know, I started to read like God showed up in the fiery furnace, three Hebrew boys and a fourth man showed up. And I was like, that's literal. Like literally the king saw mm -hmm. Jesus was in the fire. Right. Yeah. And I preached that a whole lot of times. But yeah. for some reason I just did it. Sometimes we read the Bible in a sanitized fashion, mm -hmm. but I literally read it in that moment. Like he was literally there. Yeah. And something yeah. hit me to where I knew in that moment he was literally here. Yeah. And so immediately I just began to weep. I began to cry because I probably thumbed through at least 15 to 20 scriptures and all of the scriptures had the same message. Wow. I saw everything through a wow. different light. Katie, I'm telling you, literally, I wept sore. I wept sore. Mm -hmm. And I've never yeah. been the type in worship to just cry my eyes out or anything like that. I, we come from a, a, a sect of Christianity where we are like known as praisers. So we were yeah. Pentecostals. I run around the building, jump over people. <laughs> I'm, I'm crazy. Yeah, you know, we hang from Saturday. We party, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but as far as just laying on the floor and worshiping yes. God and like the woman with the alabaster box, mm -hmm. who I talk about in the book, pouring our heart out and you just wash his feet with yeah. tears. We didn't have that experience. But in that moment, I probably could have filled up a 32 ounce cup with just tears and snot. I felt like every body part that can excrete mm. liquid. I mean, I felt like my ears had liquid wow. coming out, my eyes, yes. my nose, my mouth. And in that moment, I was shaking, mm. I was trembling, and it was such a strong encounter with the Holy Spirit. I had ever experienced anything like that beyond being initially baptized in the Holy Spirit. That yeah. was pretty radical. But beyond that, literally, I was shaking so much that if you would have walked in the room, mm. you would have thought that I was having a literal seizure and I couldn't stop. And I wow. had no paradigm wow. for that. Yeah. So I was shaking, I was crying, I was tremoring. And the first thing, Jennifer, that came out of my mouth was, God, I'm so sorry. Yeah. And I didn't know why mm -hmm. I said that. It wasn't premeditated. I just was weeping at the desk and I said, God, I'm mm -hmm. so sorry. God, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And that was just coming out like a fountain. Wow. I just repeated it over and over. My shirt's wet. And in that moment, I just closed my eyes and I just said, God, I'm so sorry. And um, I saw a vision of Jesus and it was him on the cross with a crown of thorns. His head was hung mm -hmm. and it was like really clear. And I, I had never seen Jesus or anything like that at that point. So it scared me because yeah. I wasn't expecting that when I closed my eyes. Yeah. So I opened them real quick, like, you know, look around, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So, like, so oh. I was like, okay, so, yeah. but then I was like, oh, that was Jesus legit. So I closed yeah. my eyes again and it was gone. So eventually I would come out of that encounter and, you know, fast forward, I would say in that moment I received, which I talked about in the book, yeah. the, gift of brokenness. And when I say the gift of brokenness, it's not really listed as a spiritual gift, but I personally feel like there are more gifts in the Bible than what's listed yeah. because the Holy Spirit is creative spirit. So ultimately he's endless, like right. as far as what he produces yeah. and those types of things. So um, when I talk about the gift of brokenness, I would say this, when your heart breaks for what breaks God's heart, you know, the more broken you are, the more nearer God will come to you. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. heaven is attracted to brokenness. And I learned that experientially, mm -hmm. through experiential knowledge, because yeah. in that moment, something came on me. It was almost like a mantle or something. It was wow. something came on me that I knew wasn't there before to the degree that after that encounter, mm -hmm. Every time I would just pray, every time I would just read the Bible, every time, even if it was night, and I'm thinking, I'm just gonna say, you know, Lord, I let me down to sleep, you know? Yeah, yeah. When it goes quick, you throw yeah, up. Yeah. I would just weep and I couldn't stop. And I'm like, Lord, I wasn't trying to do this. But in those moments, I never ever have felt God's presence mm -hmm. so near to me. That's so good, because like I know when my grandpa passed, I had a heaviness and heart, you know, and I felt the Lord come, the comforter came, mm -hmm. and I felt what you're saying, the, the nearness of God. Mm -hmm. It was almost like a cloak of the Lord, Absolutely. a warmth yeah. came to, uh, you know, the word said he's near the brokenhearted. Yeah. And so I love that you say 
brokenness attracts heaven. Yes. Uh, but there was another encounter you had as well, an yeah. encounter that you personally had with Jesus himself mm -hmm. when he yes. came to visit you. Yeah. Yes. Can you share that story? Yeah, I absolutely can because, you know, my encounter with Jesus came during that season of brokenness. So mm -hmm. the encounter I just described, my encounter with Jesus was literally seven or eight weeks later. Wow. And that seven or eight weeks was actually filled with encounter. And I can't even wow. go into details with them in that book, but it was like something different every week. Yeah. And that was weird for me. Yes. You know, because I was just like, yo, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't I'm not like a, a guy who's marked by lots of visions and dreams. Mm -hmm. When I have them and they're prophetic, they're accurate, but it's not something that I, I don't live in that place. Right. And right. Um, I lived there for that eight weeks. And so with a lot of those scriptures, they talked about how Jesus appeared to the people. He was in the fire with them, Saul on the road to Damascus. You know, Jacob wrestled with the angel or wrestled with God. Um, I just started seeing different things. I, I started to study Moses' relationship with the Lord, with God, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and how even God wanted to meet with Israel and they were afraid yeah. because, you know, it was, he, God was in the thick uh, darkness and they was yeah. like, no, he's gonna oh, kill us, yeah, you know? Yeah. You go, Moses, and you tell us what he said, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, so I started looking at all those things very literally and so I I started asking the Lord, you know, if this is real and you can really have this level of intimacy with your children, mm -hmm. can I have that? You know, I want that, you yes. know? And you know, when I talk about dreams and visions, our family, we've we've been accustomed to that. Like my mom, she would see angels in the house and we would have all different types of things. And some of that I inherited just through genealogy, mm -hmm. right? But Jesus having an encounter with him, I didn't have a paradigm for them. My mom never yes. had, went that far, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so, yes. so I just started asking. I felt like God was no respect of the persons. So I felt like, yo, if I ask and I'm sincere, I believe he'll appear to me. I had full confidence. Yes. And I believe like if anybody's watching the show or the broadcast yes. and you desire to have that type of encounter with the Lord, yes. All you have to do is ask sincerely and God will give it to you. Yes. And um, I'm not special. There's no respecter of person. It's not because I'm a pastor. Any believer who's right. hungry, the Bible says if you're hungry and you're thirsty after righteousness, he'll fill you. He'll satisfy you. Yeah. And so I asked the Lord and I expected it. And expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. And so I literally... Say that again. Expectation yeah. is the breeding yes. ground for miracles. Yeah. And so I expected, I mean, every time I I would go to prayer, I would almost be praying with one out. I'm like, he's about to walk through the wall. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was reading all these yeah. stories in the Bible. Yeah, so I was yeah. like, he's about to walk through the yeah. wall. I would almost get nervous. It was that, uh, had that level of in anticipation. Wow. And so one night I worked, I got off at 6 a.m. And I, it was a Sunday morning. It was February 11th. 2018, and you know when you know the date something happened. Yeah, you know? yeah, so yeah, yeah. That was a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a long time yeah. ago. So I got off work and I had to preach that day at our church. Mm -hmm. And I was literally like, Lord, if you could just let me just get home and get three hours of sleep, I would be really good. Yeah. I wasn't thinking, I, I know this whole seven weeks, I've every day. But the mm. one day I was off my post, I wasn't thinking about an encounter. Yes. I didn't want an encounter that day. Right. I just wanted to sleep. Yeah. I've been working. And um, literally, I didn't drink any fluids. I didn't drink anything after midnight because I didn't want to get up and then have to use a bathroom and break my sleep. That's what I was yeah. thinking about. Yeah. And I remember I got home, I went to the guest bedroom. I didn't want to disturb my wife or her to disturb me when she got up to church. <laughs> and so I lay down about 7.30 and I immediately went to sleep. I used the bathroom before I went to bed. And this is significant saying that because I used the restroom before and then I laid down. And within 30 minutes, I had the sensation that I had to go to the bathroom, which I knew, I know now was impossible, yeah. but that's what it felt like. That's how God set me up. Mm -hmm. And so I get up, I get off my bed and I remember walking towards the door and I put my feet on the floor and everything. And I put my hand towards mm. the doorknob to turn it and open it. And all of a sudden it was like a literal bomb went off. It was like an explosion went off. Wow. Now in that moment, I didn't see any fire. I didn't see any yeah. explosion, but I felt like, you know, how the shock wave of yes, it, yes. I felt that, but I, I understood in that moment, it was the wow. power of God. Yeah. You know, like when you're in a service and hands laid on you and that electricity, yeah. all of that. And I, I literally wow. flew back. I was airborne and I hit the floor. Now, when I hit the floor, it felt like I landed on a pile of feathers. There was no mm. pain or anything there. Wow. It was just the most beautiful place I'd ever been. Wow. So I'm on the floor. 
you in Psalm 23. Come yeah. on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So green right, pasture. right, green pasture. So yeah. I'm on the floor and uh, my eyes are closed. I'm laying on my back and then I'm kind of just like opening my eyes. And I remember when I opened my eyes, the first thing that I noticed was I heard angels singing. Wow. I heard like string instruments, like the atmosphere of heaven had broken into my room mm. in a way that I had never experienced. Wow. And I just heard all of this beautiful music. I heard angelic, it was like a choir. It wasn't just one person. It was like a whole army mm. of singing, but it was wow. so beautiful. Wow. There's nothing on earth. Like I, after that, I got on YouTube and tried to find something similar to it, which I did. And I'm, I'm listening to this, but the first thing I noticed was that the room was filled with the peace of God. Hey. Uh. Now, when I tell you that the room was filled with the peace of God, this mm -hmm. was a supernatural peace yeah. that is beyond human comprehension. And mm -hmm. when I say that, I mean like, you know how when we go through a hard trial, mm -hmm. you know, and then God gives us peace. And we were like, God gave me peace. He brought us through it. You know, we had a trial. I told you guys we All lost right. our first son. And yeah. when we did that, you know, we was like, oh, God brought us through. He gave us peace. And he did. Yeah. But this was out of this world. It was alien. It was foreign. It's not to wow. be compared to that. This is who God yeah, is. this is who God is. This wow. type of piece, I can't even describe it, but this is the best I can do. If you could bottle it up, like mm -hmm. in the energy drink and drink it, listen, oh. you could go through what Job went through. I could lose my wife and my two kids a day, and if I had that, it would be a piece of cake. Wow. It would be a piece of cake. You know, oh, even while you're saying that, I'm thinking that, about it. I know, <laughs> even yeah, while you're emotion. saying that, I know Ooh. there's so many people that are struggling without the peace because fear mm -hmm. is reigning. Um, a lot of panic and atrocities happen across. Would you pray and impart that yeah. right now? In us? Jesus' name, God, yes. I just thank you right now for every viewer. I pray right now that those that are going through tragedies, God, yes. those that are going through loss yes. and sickness, God, those who are dealing with the mm. death of loved ones, God, and they're struggling in their yes. mind and their spirits and their soul. Mm. God, we just speak a perfect peace over them right yes. now in the name of Jesus. Just like you gave me in that encounter, God, I, I speak and I part that. Yes to yes. every listener now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you right now, God, that it's a complete state of rest yes. and quietness in you. There's a repose, God, that it doesn't matter what's happening on the outside. Yes. They have something on the inside, a deep fountain, a deep well of life springing up. I thank you that there are rivers of living water, wells of life springing up into salvation. And God, we just give you praise for that peace right now in Jesus' name. Yes. Just receive yes. that peace. Lift yeah. Yes. I receive it in the yeah. name of Jesus. I, I receive yes. it name of Jesus. I know. But can you go back and finish what you were saying before that? What did Jesus say to you when he came? Yeah, so what ends up happening is I felt this peace and then I end up like sitting up and I look. Now, you know, when I look to the door, Jesus is standing there, mm -hmm. but his back is to me. He's got a white robe on. He's got hair similar to Katie's. No, uh -huh. um, no, he's got on, he's got pretty long length hair, um, and he was Jewish. He had you know he had copper toned skin. You know, just these details. It, it, I knew immediately. Your spirit and your soul immediately knows yeah. that that's Jesus. Yeah. You know, and it probably didn't. He didn't look like what I would have envisioned him to look like. Actually, you know, but I knew immediately yeah. that that was Jesus, and so. I'm just like processing it all quick. And I call out, I say, Jesus, mm. you know, I say, Jesus, you know, and then he turns around. Okay. Now when he turns around, like it got real at that moment. And the first thing I noticed was my mouth didn't move. Wow. My mouth didn't move. And it was literally like it came out of here. It mm -hmm. came out of my head and out of my like spirit. Mm -hmm. So I was telepathic and um, I reached out to him and he turns around and he extends his right hand and I grabbed his hand. And when I grabbed his hand, it was literally flesh. Mm. I felt warmth, I felt muscle, I felt bone, wow. it was a hand. And um, the first thing, cause you're like, what do you say to Jesus in that moment? This better be yeah. good, you may never yeah. get this again. Yeah. You know, right. because it was as real as I'm sitting here talking to you too. Yeah. It was that real. Mm. And. Um, the first thing that came out of my mouth was thank you. Oh. The first thing that came out of my mouth was thank you. And um, I remember like, I remember in my head, I was like, that's not good enough. So I was like, <laughs> you know, so I like repeated it and I was like, no, I literally said no. And I looked him in his eyes and I said, thank you for everything. 
Yes. And in that moment, I thought mm -hmm. about salvation, what he did on the cross, my family, my health. And, you know, the mm -hmm. frivolous things didn't really come up. It was the things that, you know, can't be bought with money. It's those right. things that are that are near and dear to your heart. I just thanked him for everything. It was an all encompassing word. And I could tell in that moment that he understood it. I also can tell sometimes people who've had encounters like that. What's powerful is that, you know, this is God. He's looking at you. And you can tell he understands everything about you. He wow. understands your flaws. He understands your humanity. He understands yeah. your sin. He knows it all. And it's like all out bare. Yeah. You yeah. know, and when I said thank you for everything, he looked at me and he said, I love you. Mm. He said, I love you. Mm. And when he said it, it like literally shot straight through me. It was like I had chills all over my body, my hair standing up. I mean, I was wrecked when he said that because it's one thing to read in the Bible, Jesus loves us. We know it, we believe yeah, it, we right. claim it, we know the love of God. Yeah, yeah, but when he says that to you, man, I, I again like the peace. You know, mm. the peace was so tangible, like you could cut it with a knife. That's how yeah, thick it yeah. was, right? But when the love of God, when I heard it out of his mouth and it went through me, I would say the best way to describe it is Jesus loves us so much. And if you, you know, your, your children, mm -hmm. right? That's love that's hard to beat. It's pure, it's mm -hmm. uncontaminated, especially when they're babies, you know? <laughs> but the thing is, is that, uh, you know, the love Jesus has for us is so much greater than that, that it makes the love we have for our children look like hate, mm, wow. legit. That's legit. profound. I'm that's telling profound. you, that's how I felt. It really brought to life, except you hate your father and your mother because some I used to struggle with it. Like, what does yeah. that mean? Yeah. You know, it couldn't mean literally hate because that would contradict the whole of the message. Right. But that's what it is. Like, wow. you can't even compare the love you mm. have for your children. Mm. I felt that love. Wow. And I'm telling you, I'm saved. I'm filled yes. with the spirit. I have an intimate relationship, but I never felt anything like that in my life. When I say wrecked, I was wrecked. And so to make a long story short, like he said again, you know, after he said, I love you, he starts to turn around. He like, I let go of his hand. Mm -hmm. And it's like, he's about to walk through the door. It's like, he's about to leave. And I'm like getting anxious, kind of frantic because I don't want him to leave. Yeah. So I said, Jesus, oh. don't leave. You know, I said, Jesus, don't leave. And again, my mouth never moved. It was just like, and when Jesus talked to me, his mouth didn't move. Yeah. It was spirit to yeah. spirit. And literally I reached out and I grabbed his arm. I can't even, I don't even have time to tell all of it, but I yeah. grabbed his arm. I felt muscle tonation. He's a carpenter, legit. <laughs> you can tell he's got a little yeah. muscle, he got a little gun. Yeah. So I grabbed his arm because I'm like up off the floor and I grabbed his arm. And you know, that's kind of a, a, a bold move. You know, if somebody grabs your arm when you're ready to leave, you're gonna be like, yo, let it go, yeah, you know? Yeah. But not Jesus, there was no ounce of pullback. It was totally like when he says, you know, take my yoke of me and learn of me for I'm meek and lowly at heart. That was another revelation was the meekness and the humility that Jesus has. And it was literally like, he kind of like smiled, like he understood how I felt in that moment. Yeah. And then he actually said a uh, second time, I love you again, which was much more profound. It was a deeper impact. And then he said, I'll be back. Oh, and I let, go, I let go of his arm and he proceeded to walk away. And the next thing I know, I appeared back in my bed. Wow. I never walked back to oh, my bed. Wow. I just appeared in my bed. Mm. So it was an out of body experience. Wow, that is very experience. supernatural. Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Lord God. Thank I you, just, Jesus. it's so profound. That's how much love that you just explained that Jesus loves all, all of us. Of us. Yes. All of us. Um, it would be an honor if you would just invite our audience to know Jesus. Oh, it would be my honor. Listen, I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're going through, what you're facing. You know, you could be watching this broadcast right now. And what I want you to know more than anything else, you have been going through trials and heartbreak and, and let down and setback. Number one, all of your tears, God says he's heard your prayers and he's seen your tears. I want you to know that nothing you've gone through will be wasted. Heaven knows right where you are and God is here for you. 
You know, and just like Katie said, the love that Jesus expressed to me in my encounter, I'm telling you that same love is real, is tangible, and it is near you right now. The Bible says God is near the brokenhearted. And so I'm just gonna pray, and then I'm gonna invite you to accept Jesus into your heart. If you've never accepted Jesus into your heart, listen, he said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart against it. I know that it's not an accident that you're watching this broadcast right now. This is your moment, yeah. this is your sign, this is your time. Make Jesus your Lord. And so I'm just gonna pray, and then after I pray, I'm just going to invite you to repeat these words with me, okay? So Father, we just thank you, and we give you praise, we give you glory for every listener watching this broadcast. I thank you right now, God, for all of those, God, who are searching for more, God, who are searching, God, for a breakthrough, God, who are at the end of themselves and are, they're saying there has to be something greater than where I'm at right now. Father, I pray in Jesus name, God, that you will come into the room right where they are. Make your presence known. Let your glory be felt in their, in their life and in their circumstance. Father, we just give you praise. Holy Spirit, I pray that you are going through the airways and that you're walking through those homes in the yes. mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you would arrest their hearts in Jesus name. We break and we bind every work of the enemy. And I pray that as they repeat this prayer, that you will become real to them in Jesus name. And so Father, in Jesus name, we just bless you. Now, if you're watching and you want to accept Jesus into your heart, just repeat these words after me. Say, Father, I thank you and I love you. I need you. And I ask right now that you would come into my heart. I renounce all of my sins, I turn away from them, and I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Let your love be made known to me, become real in my life. I turn away from every idol, every false God, every sin, every weight, and every habit. I turn towards you, I turn towards the cross. Father, help me and I need you. I love you and I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if that's you, first of all, I just wanna say welcome to the family yeah. of God. Yeah, it's celebration <laughs> time. Welcome to the family yeah. of God. Yes, yes. Yeah. Derek, thank you for coming. Oh, thank, thank you, you for, for sharing your heart and your stories. Thank you for having me. Oh, what a yes. blessing. Thank you. What an honor, man. Yes. I feel like celebrating yes. with you all. If you ask Jesus yes. into your heart, it's like a joy yes. fest over yes. here. Yes. We always are so appreciative that you have joined us, and I hope that you have learned yes. about the great love of God. We thank you. We love you. And may this be the day you rise up in, in Jesus' name. Jesus name. When I'm weak, you give me strength.